Hey friends. So I'm headed to an event, Black Girl Magic. So one of my colleagues, you know, I know her through business. Um, she's launching her own podcast. So I'm excited for her. So I'm going to support my black girl. Okay, that's what it's about, right? Black supporting blacks, um, supporting each other, right? So that we can prosper and stop having other races prosper. We need to prosper, okay? So I'm going to support her and give donations and all of that stuff and, you know, and, and, and promote her, right? Because if I can promote Beyonce and everybody else and Cardi B and everybody else, why can't I support, you know, another black girl that has a small business doing her thing, okay? So this video is not about that, but it is about that, right? So I always wanted to do this video and I always kept forgetting. <clears throat> Church. Church. <laughs> you know, church is a touchy topic. Politics and religion is always a touchy subject. church <laughs> honestly I don't like church I, I just really don't honestly deep down inside I don't like church okay I feel that church is a scam I mean that's just what I feel that's just my opinion but I grew up in the church. So my mom used to go to church when I was she was pregnant with me. My mom was going to church when I was a baby, when I was, you know, in high school, junior high school, college. My mom went to church my whole life. My grandmother have went to church my whole life, my whole mom's life. And my grandmother went to church her whole childhood. And her mom went to church their whole life. You know, we can do the same thing with building wealth and the legacy. It's so crazy. We already got the tool. We already know how to do it. Right? So what I feel about church, that church is all about money. Literally. This day and age. But think about it. When church was first formed in the 1800s, it was for the slaves to come. To, now, slaves didn't have no money. So it was for the slaves to come together to help and heal each other. You didn't need no license. You didn't need no ordination or ordaining to be a pastor. You didn't need, you know, whatever pastors get now, a minister license and all this other shit that they get now. It was a bunch of black people got together and said, we want to help each other to heal and get over the hurt and all the beatings and shit that we went through. That was it. So, who did they pray to, though? Here's the flip side. Who did they pray to? They prayed to a white God, right? Because the master said, God is white. So from the inception, the inception of church, we had to worship a white God. So psychologically, we put white males on a pedestal our whole life before we even born, okay? White presidents, white bosses, white spouses, okay? White co-workers, okay? Black people put white people or white males especially on a pedestal. We are, we feel like we're inferior. We feel like white people are better, right? So we're blacks in the 1800s, you know, just trying to get some healing, just trying to get some comfort, you know, so we can find in each other. But the master says, pray to this white God. So that fucked us up right there. Okay, even though they got all these images of God, that God is black and he's really not white and all this stuff. God is how you want him to be because God is in you. God, you are God. 
You are the creator. Remember one of my mentors said, you are God. You are the creator of your life. You are the spirit. God only helps you when you take the steps. God don't help you if you're sitting on the couch eating bonbons. God ain't helping you if you're just praying and crying and hoping. You know, you take action and God helps the spirit. Remember, it's all belief. We all believe in this spirit. That's all it is. You don't have to believe in God. You don't have to believe in, in, in Jesus. Who said? Who said that you got to believe in Jesus? Your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother? That's the only reason you, you believe in God. And then you hear people, oh, thank God, thank God. You know, and a lot of people don't really even believe in God because if you truly believed, here's how I feel about it. If you truly believed in a higher spirit and you truly believe in a higher power, then why are most people struggling? Then why are so many people in turmoil? Why are so many people broke? Why are so many people broken? Why are so many people in bad relationships? Why are so many people thinking negative? If you believe in a higher power, that the higher power is going to help and save you and help you grow and go and get to the next level. Then why in the hell is so many people struggling? So many people are in a black hole that they can't get out of. Too many people in homeless shelters. Too many people are not eating, but they believe in God. I start to question that. So what God do you believe in? Because the God I believe in talks about riches, talks about wealth, talks about abundance, talks about prosperity, talks about helping others. That's the God I believe in. I don't know what God these people believe in who's struggling and who can't make ends meet, who can't never seem to, you know, or, you know, pay their bills and got to keep robbing Dick to pay Paul. I, I don't know, but I digress. <laughs> I believe in God. But again, God is within us. God is inside of us. So we are the creators. So in the 1800s, we were taught to worship. So now we put white people on a pedestal. This is why a lot of black men love white women. A lot of uh, uh, white women, I mean, a lot of black women love white men. And a lot of black men love white women. Okay? So if we've been trained our whole life to worship or that white is power, then of course we want to be next to power, right? All the time. So Dr. Umar calls black people that want to be white, they call them coons, right? They, they're coons, right? Because they're against the black people, right? But again, you know, if we were brainwashed, like Michael Jackson said, remember, he wanted to be a white man. He became a white man <laughs> when he died. Right? Again, if you were lied to for 400 years and someone comes and says that's wrong, you're going to defend your ignorance. You're going to defend it. And you're going to sound stupid defending your own ignorance, but you don't know. This is why black people, we have to wake up. We have to come together. We have to support one another. We have to put each other on a pedestal instead of pulling each other down. That's what we truly have to do, right? We're our own God. We don't need a picture of a, a man that's made up. You know, God is in us. I'm God. You're God, right? So I feel like in the modern church now, Right, I feel like in the modern church now that they made it and they turned it into a business and it's not about helping people anymore. Look at these mega churches. Look at these fucking mega, yo, it's mad traffic. Look at these mega churches. Now it's nothing wrong with people going to church and worshiping God and all that. But look at these mega churches. How many of these people go to these mega churches and they continue to struggle year on year on year on year on year? These pastors get rich and richer and richer and richer selling a fucking hope that God is your everything. God is not your everything. You are your everything. You got to have faith in you. 
You got to have faith in you enough that you believe in a higher power for abundance and prosperity, wealth and riches. See? If you just believe in God that your mother told you to believe in, you're just as bad as the, as, as the slaves that that, that 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 came up with the church in the 1800s worshiping a white God. Because your mom is worshiping a white God. I don't give a fuck what black picture you had of Jesus in your house. People say to me, oh, God got me through it. How did God get you through it? God got you through what? Oh, God got me through it. What did God get you through? Oh, he got me through the struggle. What struggle? Oh, my kids wasn't eating or, you know, I couldn't pay my bills for a while. Well, then how did you end up paying your bills after not paying it for a while? Well, I had to borrow some money from, you know, some friends. Well, you did it. God did not do that. You did it. Right? So people can say whatever they want to say. Oh, God, you know, help me. What God? Because if you're struggling year on year, you're constipated year on year, your health is declining year on year, your wealth is declining year on year, your relationships are declining year on year, what God are you serving? The devil? Because I'm serving a God that's about riches, wealth, abundance, and prosperity. That's all he wants for me. That's all God wants for me. He don't want me struggling. He don't want me living in the basement. He don't want me driving a shitty car. He don't want me making a little bit of money just to get by money. That's the God I serve. He said, no, Tony, I want you to get rich because I need you to help some people. <laughs> That's what he told me. I, I don't know what the fuck he's telling all these other people. <laughs> That's worshiping God and they ain't got no money never. You ain't never got money. You can't never go nowhere. You can't never get a nice car. You can't never get a nice house. You ain't never got at least a grand in the bank. What God are you serving? Again, in the modern day church, it's all about the pastor getting rich. And then now you start to worship your pastor as the God. When well, you should be worshiping yourself and putting money into yourself so you can grow in prosperity and abundance and riches and wealth. Right? You should. You should now put that inside of you. Instead of giving the church 10%, God says give 10%. Yes, he does say. Guess what? Random people. I give money away. I'll give $10 away, $5 away. I'll pay somebody toll. I'll pay for somebody food. I'll pay for something. That's my 10% back. I don't have to go give it to a church that who knows what the fuck they're going to do with it. I pay tithes every day. And I pay more than 10% <laughs> of my income. Guess what? In turns, I continue to be blessed. God continues to watch over me. I'm from the universe and I live with God. I have a hundred percent faith in me in turns. Now I can have faith in a higher power that you know what God, you're not going to stand me in the wrong direction. You're not going to have me having the wrong thoughts. You're not going to make, you're not going, you're going to make sure that I ain't never broke another day in my life. You're going to make sure that I'm living prosperous. So when people say, you know, they believe in God and, and God going to do it for them and God give them the strength. What God, the devil, God, because trust me, people worship the devil too. And they don't even know it sad trust me <laughs> it is very 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 I'm thinking about getting off this is ridiculous I'm gonna get off this is ridiculous yeah I'm getting off so what God are you really serving so again the mega churches, the mega preachers, they get paid to sell people on a white God that really don't even exist. And they getting paid. That's fraud. <laughs> you know, some of y'all may not like this video, but hey, this is truth. <laughs> So you're going somewhere because you believe that your pastor is close to God. So you go to this church and you pay them so that your pastor can tell you to believe in something that's not even real or it's real, but it's in you. And you could just stay home and worship you and you paying them money to do the same thing you could do at home. That's fraud. You're not getting anything.
You're not getting nothing in return. What? You going to church to look cute? I think church is a fucking fashion show. All the ladies at my church, shit, they be wearing all these big ass hats and shit. <laughs> Dripping suits. Like, I thought you were supposed to be coming to worship and shit. Tight ass dresses, looking for a man. Man, listen, like I said, I think church is a scam. Y'all may disagree or whatever. But I go to church because it's embedded in me. I used to go every Sunday. Now I try to go once, twice a month. Okay, again, it's embedded in me to go. So sometimes I do feel like, damn, I gotta go to church. For real, I've been going to church for 35 years. That's like, you know, you smoking heroin for 35 years every day. And now you stop. Now you're like, I need to fucking smoke some motherfucking heroin. Nice. That's how it goes. So I try, right, just to keep up with my grandmother and mom, right? I go probably once or twice. And my kids, they go once or twice. I don't want to embed my kids and say, you got to go to church. I tell my kids, they don't got to go. It's just something that we want to do. And that's it. My, my oldest, you know, she goes sometimes. My youngest, sometimes she don't want to go. I don't be like, oh, you got to go to church. Oh, my God. If you don't go to church, you're going to die. You know, no, I don't even embed that shit. And they don't want to go. All right, fine, fuck it. We ain't going it's just simple as that, right? So, at the end of the day, guys, okay, like I said, I feel that church is very scammy, okay? And you cannot win, all right? You cannot win when all the money is being funneled to help someone else get rich while you stay poor. Think about it. That's how the government got people. All your money that you're working for is falling to the government while the government get rich and they're starving people right now and you stay poor. That's the same thing the church does. I don't give my money to the church anymore. I may give 20, but I used to go hard. Like, oh, I'm giving a thousand dollars this month. I'm giving two thousand dollars this month. And I'm like, man, listen, church won't thrive without my tithes. I'm giving my tithes to a random person. You ain't got to be homeless. I don't just give it. Oh, let me give a homeless person. No. If, I, if I'm driving and I got to pay a toll, guess what? I'll just say, you know what? Pay for the next person behind me. Or if I'm in a restaurant and I'm paying for my food, I'll say, you know what? Pay for this person's behind me. Or literally, I'll just walk up to somebody and give him $5. The guy at the bank the other day, I gave him $10. I just said, here, here goes a tip for helping me. That's tithing. <laughs> Despite the pastor may say it's not. The pastor may say, oh, that's not tithing. You got to bring all the money to the storehouse. Man, fuck the storehouse. The storehouse is right here. I'm the storehouse. I'm the one working for the money. I'm the one getting the money. My, I'm the storehouse. I'm God. I'm the creator. I am create my life. I create the life, you know, for my kids and my spouse. Not God. God is only a tool, just like money. God is only a tool. God ain't the end-all, be-all, just like money ain't the end-all, be-all. It's just a tool to help us live our life. Think about it. How many people got so much faith in God that they broke to death? They ain't got no faith in themselves. They ain't got no faith in their work ethic. They ain't got no faith in their ability. They don't got no faith in themselves. But they got a thousand percent faith in God. Sit on the couch. Jesus, please. You 600 pounds. Jesus, please, you know, help me lose weight. You just ate five pizzas. Um, God is not helping you. Sorry. God doesn't respond to the needy and the desperate and the greedy. He responds to the desires and the wants. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, right? For you guys who believe in a higher power for prosperity, wealth, and abundance... But if you believe in God just to stay broke, then I don't know what God you serve in. If you just believe God just to be sick and keep being sick, I don't know what God are you serving. Because I'm serving a God of high power. God of abundance. He said, baby, I want you to be rich. I want you to have everything that you want, everything that you desire. Because when you do get all of that, now I can send you people so you can help them get all of that too. I'm Reverend Ike. Fuck it. I'm about to start calling myself Reverend Ike. That's what Reverend Ike did. Even Reverend Ike says. He said, you are God. 
God is within you. The spirit of the Lord is with you. The spirit of the Lord of abundance. Prosperity and wealth is in you. The spirit of, of, of brokenness and boredom and lack is in you too. Which one are you going to operate on? Too many people operate on the spirit of lack and fear. No confidence, no organization, no uh, faith, too much anxiety. So what God are you really serving? Why do you really go to church? For a fashion show? Just to give money, just to say, oh, I paid my tithes and you feel good. And meanwhile, you go home, you done gave 500 to the church. Because my church says, oh, give us, you know, one of your paychecks. Y'all fucking crazy. You think I'm going to give y'all one for what? So y'all could build y'all house? Meanwhile, my house need motherfucking food? My car no need paid? I'm finna give y'all half of my shit or all of it? These churches are bold, man, I'm telling you. It's a fucking scam. And what do they give you for that? They make you think that you're gonna be cursed if you don't give your all. Man, listen, I'm not. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Reverend Elaine Flake, <laughs> that's my bastard. That's what my church says. Oh. Give us one of your paychecks. Meanwhile, how much? 800,000 government workers ain't getting paid, so they can't give nothing. Honestly, think about it. Like Dr. Umar said, he said, church is like a casino. At least at the casino, you know you're going to lose your money. You know you're going to get drinks. You know, you you know, there's, there's like 10% chance you'll win some money but in church you just go lose your money and you don't even really even expect to get any money back that's what he said that's what he said that's what dr umar said it's like a casino church is like a casino you put money in you get nothing out <laughs> same thing at a casino you put money in, you get nothing out how much people go to the casino and then they lose there's only a couple people that actually go to the casino and win big but trust me, they've been playing at the casino for decades, probably, too. So that's my spiel, guys. I'm headed to, you know, my Black Girls Rock, you know, her event. I'm looking to support her and just be in the midst of Black greatness of people that are successful. But again, remember, you are God. God is within you. You have the opportunity to operate on the uh, uh, on the spirit of lack or the spirit of abundance. You choose your God. And it's choosing you. You can choose to say, I'm going to live in abundance and start operating like that. Or I'm going to live in lack and start operating like that too. Remember, the law of attraction work both ways, positive and negative. If you out there criminalizing and, be a, and being a fucking crook, all that shit gonna come back to you. But if you out there really changing lives and really helping people, then, you know, that's gonna come back to you too. So that's my spiel, guys, on church. If you want to know how I am building a legacy, how I am able to work from home, make money, help others. Go to blackwealth101.net. See at the top, guys, because the bottom just too crowded.